Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, our Word for the Moment video blog. I uh, hope everyone has been enjoying the last few blogs we've done. And uh, I've been talking about uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5. As I have said previously, I believe that this next season of God will be identified by that scripture. There may be many other things, of course, but I believe that we're going to have two major things coming in this season, the tasting of the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, millennial power and having millennial people, people that do things and introduce a different dimension in God. It will be a purely supernatural walk. And I am expectant, I am hopeful that we're about to move into this season. One of the important things that I want to emphasize, as I have done previously, is that with, I believe, around October the 10th of 2018, a new season in God began. And I believe the Lord has shown us that many of the things that we have been believing for and praying for on a corporate and a personal level are being released right now. People that have been praying for breakthrough, maybe their circumstances <clears throat> have been difficult. <clears throat> and, you know, whether it be personal issues, financial issues, marital issues, whatever the case may be, children that are in rebellion, but you've been praying and praying and praying and praying. I believe we're about to see the tears turned into joy, as it says in Psalm 126. When the Lord brings back the captive ones of Zion, we'll be like those that dream. Our mouth will be filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. For the Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. I believe that's going to identify this season. The Lord is going to do some great things for us. I believe that wholeheartedly. I'm already seeing it. And we're going to be glad. We're going to have joy. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Wouldn't that be a novel idea for us to really truly have joy? Because something has to set us apart from the remainder of the world in the midst of great darkness. And we already know the things that are taking place in the world around us. Things that are being decided by governmental leaders and things that are just wickedness of the highest order are taking place right now around us. But in the midst of that, God's going to lift a standard. and He's going to have a people that are set apart. That is true. They're going to be set apart and they're not going to live like the world. You know, a true person that's after God doesn't want to live like the world. We're not wanting to find excuses to push the border of the word just to see how much we can get away from it with. We want to find out what God's heart is and try our best to live accordingly. That's what I believe is taking place now. Several years back, I had an experience where, you know, I don't say this often, but an angel came and stood right next to me. And it gave, the angel was about eight feet tall and very strong and muscular looking. I didn't see it in a physical form, but more like an ethereal form. And it was standing to my left, which is unusual because normally when I've had a few angelic visitations, they've always been to my right. But this one was standing to my left and gave me a scripture out of Isaiah chapter 42, verses six through nine. But I really believe that we're moving into this season where the truth of that scripture will be relevant and applicable. But it says that in righteousness have you been called. And the Lord will watch over, he'll hold you by the hand and watch over you or us and appoint you as a covenant to the people and a light to the nations to open blind eyes and to bring forth the prisoners from the dungeon and those who dwell in darkness from their prisons. For he said, I am the Lord, that is my name and I will not give my glory to another nor my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. And before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. That's what the scripture says. A couple of points I want to highlight from that because I am still emphasizing this idea of tasting the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. He said, I'll make you a covenant to the people. We're going to walk in covenant. We are in the covenant. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and you've accepted His blood for the remission of your sins, you are in covenant with Him. But even within the covenant, there's greater understandings of covenants. Covenant blessings, covenant of peace, covenant of miracles, covenant of revelation, and so on it goes. But I'll make you a covenant to the people and a light to the nations. There it is right there. A light, 
an illumination. That's the tasting of the good word of God. In the last blog, I talked about this pure, undiluted light that is coming from heaven. It's going to strike ministry centers. I call them apostolic hubs because it looked like the hub of a wheel. And this pure white light came from heaven. And interestingly, right after I prophesied that a few years back, there were these anomalies in multiple places where these beams of light seemingly were coming from heaven. I have two or three of them on my computer. And I'm assuming they're real because they, they looked real. But either way, it was, it was exactly what I saw, these pure white beams of light coming from God. And the God said they were, it was plumb line revelation and that we would have plumb line prophets. You know, Paul one time said, the message I preach, if anyone preaches another, let them be accursed. What an amazing thing to say. He was so confident in his revelation because it didn't come through men nor by the reading of a book, but by the revelation of the apocalypso, the unveiling, the disclosure, the manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's where we are right now. We are in need of that same kind of revelation, not to add to the scriptures, but to truly, genuinely understand the scriptures. There are mysteries that are hidden there. People might say, well, we've had the Word of God for all of these centuries. I'm telling you in the name of the Lord, there are about to be revelations that are coming that we're going to look at them and marvel that we had not seen them before because God's going to lift the veil. It's going to be behind the veil, unseen realm revelation. There is an Omega Ministries coming. He is the Alpha and the Omega. This is part of the Omega Ministries, the, culm the culmination, the end of it, the end of the age the fullness of time, all those things that speak of this generation. And it's going to be great illumination, a light to the nations. It'll go to the nations of the earth to, bring, to open blind eyes. Well, I believe there will be people, ministries, sons of God raised up that will literally open blind eyes, but it will be a sign that the blinders are being lifted from God's people. We are looking at the Word, maybe not completely blind, but with blinders. Maybe it's the blinders of tradition or, or whatever you know, these things are that keep us from seeing absolute truth. But there is a grace, if a person wants it, to have the blinders lifted in this season. There is an atmosphere of the anointing. There is a realm of glory that is coming that we will bring into meetings, and all of a sudden the blinders are lifted, and you will say to yourself, how did I not see that? I've actually had people tell me that in recent days, weeks and months, that, that you know, they didn't believe something, but all of a sudden their, their eyes are open. They see it as clear as day. They don't even understand how they had not seen it before. Well, that's part of the, the scenario of what this will be. Great illumination coming, eyes that will be open, blind eyes opened. And then we're going to bring forth the prisoners from the dungeon. I believe a lot of those prisoners are God's people living in a form of religious prison. And many of those that dwell in darkness from the dungeons. There are dungeons that the enemy has created. Prisons and dungeons. Those are the two things you see there in Isaiah 40, 42. Prisons and dungeons. I know a lot of God's people feel like we're supposed to be free and liber liberated, but they feel like they're in a prison whether it be a prison of religion or control or manipulation or any of these things. And I want to prophesy freedom. I want to begin to prophesy liberty. There is an anointing coming, a covenant people for, of God that will bring a liberty that will free those that are still bound by some form of darkness or some form of dungeon. And they're going to begin to change the planet. They're going to begin to change the earth. I have said this before. There is great reformation coming. The Reformation is not over as some has, have prophesied. I believe that is wrong. I believe the greatest Reformation is yet to come. And we're going to see Christianity. We're going to see the believing in Jesus Christ, being a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ to have an entirely different meaning and dimension for this remnant of God's people. And they will be the John the Baptist type, a forerunner taking place. There are many people that are types in shadows there are parables, if you will, of the bride and, and, uh, and they're coming out of a season of difficulties and prisons into a season of liberty and freedom and justice where the Lord renders their verdict in favor of the saints and the saints begin to take possession of the kingdom. 
That's really where I believe we are. That's what relates Revelation chapter 1 and Daniel chapter 7 together. That is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, the Ancient of Days, who renders a verdict in favor of the saints. Scripture says, The horn of the adversary has waged war with the saints and overpowered them for a season until the Ancient of Days renders a verdict in favor of the saints and the saints take possession of the kingdom. That's why I believe the understanding the courtrooms of God is so important because Isaiah says, Come, present your case. It's what I'm encouraging you to do. Present your case to God. Lord, I have prayed and prayed for all these many years. I've shed tears and prayed and believed, and I believe court is in session. (laughs) I believe court is in session right now, and the Lord is sitting on His judgment bench, and right now He's rendering verdicts in favor of the saints and people that that have been toiling and fighting and contending and believing for this realm of revelation and power are going to be given verdicts and now they're going to step into a whole new dimension. Their life will not look in a year from now what it's looked like in the prior years. And even as the years go by, it'll begin to escalate and increase. That's what I believe. I genuinely, in fact, we're seeing this. We're seeing this already where verdicts are being rendered on behalf of the godly, the righteous people of God. And the, the Lord is not going to allow the enemy to harass them any longer. They're going to be free They're going to experience a realm of freedom that they've never experienced before because God is for us. He's for us. He's rousing himself as a man of war, it says, you know, in Isaiah 42, I believe it is. And he's he's awakening himself as, as as if from slumber. And all of a sudden, he's rendering verdicts. I like that idea. God's on our side. And I believe we're going to begin to see the fruit of that and the days ahead. Tasting the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. In the prior blog, I related the tasting of the good word of God to Revelation chapter 10. I would encourage a number of you to begin to preach and prophesy and just declare and decree the eating of this open book, the revelation, the full and complete revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ because mysteries are coming. We're going to begin to hear messages preached unlike we've heard before but it's going to be God if it's, if it's validated by this word, by the word, the absolute. That's what I'm after, the absolute of God, which is the pure revelation of the word validated and vindicated with power. The kingdom of heaven does not consist in word only, but also in power. I think that's why Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 5 has both word and power, tasting of the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. Lord, I pray that you will find what you're looking for among these that listen to this message, that you would hold us by the hand and watch over us, that you would establish us in righteousness and that you would render a verdict in our behalf. I'm asking for that. All across the body, people that are listening to this blog, you need a verdict in your behalf. You need the Lord to rule in your favor to free you from the chains of the prior season and release you into the liberty and freedom of the new season so that not only your eyes are open, but also you begin to be a carrier of illumination that brings light and illumination to those around you to begin to see so that you too can bring others out of prisons and dungeons to a place of freedom and liberty. Grant that to your people, Lord. Let that be the identification of the remnant of your people in this season of time that we are entering now. Grant that, Lord, I ask in your great and holy name, Jesus Christ.